Rasa. Oh ya. Yeah. Assalamualaikum everybody. We are live Tuesday morning. Uh, like I said, uh, hai din, itwar ka din hai. Is waqt pata nahi chal raha ke kaun sa din chal raha hai. And we have with us Isma Khan. Assalamualaikum. Welcome Isma Khan. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thank you for having me. Thank you for taking time out to be with us. So, um, Isma Khan is a BCBA. She's a behavioral analyst, therapist. Uh, she runs I Care. Uh, a lot, a lot, a lot under her um, accomplishments list. So, before wasting any further time, Isma, what? How can you introduce yourself to all of us? Okay, so um, well, as you said, my name is Isma, and um, I moved back to Pakistan after about fifteen years. <laughs> and i pursued psychology for my undergrad then i did uh, my masters in aba applied behavior analysis with a focus on autism and it's been about 2 years that i've been working in pakistan i started privately out of my home initially doing one on one therapy sessions yeah. um and then i recently opened a center called i care um and over here in the center we do therapy for children with autism developmental delays and and the main focus of the work we do is to teach children how to communicate so when a child comes to me and they don't make sounds or they they cannot communicate we spend our time teaching them how to and we work on sign language and vocalizations so that is uh, generally how it works and uh, uh, as well apart from that is uh, we spend time training parents and i feel parental involvement is so important because if a child goes for therapy for 1 hour a day there are still 23 hour 23 hours left in a day so it's very important for parents to also be on board and also implement what we train them with so there is consistency and if there's consistency the child learns faster and it will make more sense to them yeah um so so coming to aba therapy right uh, mujhe pata hai ki aapka ye main focus bhi hai uh, in terms of uh, uh, practicing therapy everybody has their different method of practice what is one particular thing like you mentioned abhi ke you know um i know you you do a lot of skill management you do a lot of implementation of speech signing what is the first thing when a parent brings in their child and every child is unique what is one of the first things that you ask the parent so the first thing so generally uh, before i begin any form of therapy with a child um mm. i first have i do a consultation um and in that consultation what we do is i meet the parent for about 45 minutes to an hour i meet the child and the questions i ask are generally when did you feel like your child had symptoms and what are the symptoms you notice bearing in mind i get parents who come to me with concerns Mm-hmm. but the child may not be on the spectrum or may not have any particular delay per se so the okay. first thing i usually mm-hmm. find out is obviously also i ask how was the mother's pregnancy because it's important to know because that may impact a child's development and then we kind of go through a history of the child their development their milestones uh, etc and then accordingly depending on where they're at i uh, decide to enroll them okay so uh, which brings me uh, to asking you ke when you said ke bahut dafa uh, parents aate hain aapke aapke paas and wo kehte hain ki mere bacche mein koi problem hai and jab aap assess karte hain and you really don't see any problem it could just be a delayed milestone how do the parents take it jab aap unko wo batati hain ke there is nothing wrong with the kid सो क्या होता है शुरू शुरू में जब पेरेंट्स आते हैं तो ऑब्वियसली वो आते हैं क्योंकि कंसर्न है ठीक है तो जब वो आते हैं और मैं बच्चे को देखती हूँ और मैं देखती हूँ कि असल में इनका तो कोई पर्टिकुलर इशू नहीं है और मैं उनको बताती हूँ सो द फर्स्ट थिंग फॉर देम इज वो बहुत रिलीव हो जाते हैं और वो कहते हैं अच्छा ठीक है आज एक बिल्कुल ठीक है बस थोड़ा डिले है तो आप इन इन चीज़ों पर काम करें एंड आई टेल दैम किन किन चीज़ों पर काम करना चाहिए कैसे करना चाहिए सो देर इज डेफिनेटली रिलीफ बट देन आई से दैट अगर डिले है उसका मतलब नहीं है कि आप बच्चे को छोड़ दो और कुछ करें नहीं आप फिर भी उनको पुश करें बिकॉज अगर आपके बच्चे छोटे हैं जितनी जल्दी आप शुरू करते हैं उतनी जल्दी रिजल्ट आते हैं जितने बड़े बच्चे बच्चे होते जाते हैं 
और मुश्किल होता है उनको सिखाने के लिए सिखा सकते हैं लेकिन बेहतर है कि आप शुरू से ही इनको हेल्प करें एंड दैट इज वॉट वी कॉल अर्ली इंटरवेंशन अलग होता है show the parents ke in in goes pe kaam karte hain and what i do every session to answer your question about parents is that har session mein ek daily data sheet hota hai jisme hum goal set karte hain aur hum likhte hain ki bachcha ne wo sahi kiya ya nahi kiya aur agar wo kiya kitna percent sahi kiya hmm. and the, a picture of that data sheet is either sent to the parent on whatsapp or and we go through that sheet at the end of every session so the parent knows kon kon se goals pe hum kaam kar rahe hain aur kon kon se goals pe unko ghar pe kaam karna hai and mm-hmm. what i've been we started really encouraging parents to do which has been amazing actually is they have then started using those goals ghar pe bhi kaam kare aur mujhe videos bhej rahe hain aur phir i can correct them ke aise karna hai waise karna hai so that really helps ki hum dono wohi cheez kar rahe hain and the child understands more quickly There's a big difference between sorry there's a big difference with children whose parents work with them at home versus the parents who don't and that is what i was coming to next because yeah. as a therapist jab bachcha aapke paas aata hai i mean my own kid so uh, i know ke uh, the therapist knows um i know a lot of therapists are tuned in right now and i and i know ke when i've worked with my child and uska kya response hota hai so when the child is in your session एंड आपको फॉरन पता चल जाता है अगर घर पे काम हो रहा है या नहीं वट डू यू से टू द पेरेंट बिकॉज आई हर्ड दिस मोर मोर देन अन टाइम्स के यू नो वेन इट्स इट्स अ वेरी चैलेंजिंग थिंग जब थेरेपिस्ट को माँ बाप को बोलना पड़ता है कि लुक यू आर डूइंग योर जॉब एट होम सो हाउ डू यू अप्रोच दैट So usually what I do um is that I say to the parent that we are working on these skills and I can see that you may not be working on it so much at home and I understand because you have a family and you have other obligations it's hard so I always set the parents small goals I say listen if it's getting to, first I want to understand why are they not working with child at home there's always a reason parents have a reason and that's okay so what we do is we start small I say okay start with 10 minutes a day work on one of the goals just one of the goals that's it then as what i've noticed which is um which is a reinforcing thing for parents is the moment parents begin and they do that one thing and they see the result they they automatically get encouraged to do more so i just tell the parents i say listen you need to work with your child just spend a few minutes 5 minutes 10 minutes gradually we'll build it up and the more you work with your child the quicker the results will come so that's generally what i say to them Now um I know that you work a lot on communication right yeah. um however like for example if we were to be um in in a in an american medical care system or a british medical care system um pakistan has no um set rules and regulations or protocols that are that should be followed by uh, healthcare practitioners क्वालिटी कंट्रोल ऑफ योर पर्टिकुलर योर पर्टिकुलर सेशन योर क्लिनिक्स सेशन So with so when you say uh, looking after the quality of sessions do you mean um how do i ensure that there is consistency between myself and other therapists or what exactly do you do uh but in in your the therapy that the services jo aap provide kar rahi hain how do you keep them in check and balance 
So usually um, I also have a team that works with me and uh, generally the therapists who work with me, they run the sessions and to ensure that the, the therapy is at a particular standard, I monitor and observe every session that takes place and what I do is um, ABA is very data driven. So. A lot, we take data on every single session and we have a folder for every client. So if I can see that the child is struggling in some things and every day when they come and we do a goal test and they don't get it, so then I watch over the pattern of data and then we keep adjusting um, what, sort of, uh, what sort of teaching techniques to use and modify that to ensure that the child learns the skill. Apart from that, I also generally for the knowledge of the therapists who work with me i do training so i uh, do rbt trainings with my therapists mm -hmm. and um, so two of my therapists i've been working on basic aba um, skills and techniques that are used to ensure that they are up to date with uh, what are the techniques to use but from my end to ensure the best quality that i can offer i oversee everything and i monitor the files and programs and we keep adjusting it every day every day all throughout the session right so so it's also bringing your own methods to the orthodox methods right 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 yeah um now the you mentioned that you're working on communication sitting tolerance self-help skills how is being independently functional like at the top of the list when we are talking about everything else. I'm very happy you asked me that question because it's so interesting. When you look at research, what happens is um, for children who are delayed, initially for parents to want to believe that their child is okay, they try and teach them things that a typical child would be doing at their age. They would be working on A, B, C, one, two, three. And I always tell parents, I say, if your child cannot ask you for water or a basic necessity, ABC will have no effect on their lives. It is meaningless and it is pointless because you need to first work on teaching your child basic skills. And I was reading an article that said that about 70% of the time, um, we don't end up teaching children or children don't end up being very independent because we're so focused on getting them to know ABC and one, two, three and drawing and writing. But independent skills is extremely important because it's important for the child to know that they are if the, the thing about independent skills is if you don't teach a child how to do things independently, they won't. It's so common. I'll ask a parent. I'll say, can your child use a spoon to pick up the rice and put it in their mouth? And they'll say, but we feed them. And I said, well, if you feed them, how are they to learn? You mm -hmm. have to put them in a position position to learn. And it's not that these children can't learn. They can learn everything. Yeah. But you need to teach them. And it's very important because if it's about 10 minutes where the mother is cooking or doing something, the child mm -hmm. should be able to go wash their hands themselves or put on their pants themselves. And this allows the mom to sort of reduce the time she spends with the child and allows the time to learn to manage themselves better. And we don't focus as much on independent skills. We, as in, in this field, we don't end up focusing so much on it as much as we, we should. And therefore, it's important to highlight that from the start and get that child to that level. Even simple things like if there's a child who's high functioning, they can talk, they can communicate. We can start working on teaching that child to when they go to the supermarket, I say they're 15 years old or 14, they can learn to use money. So they give that they read 10 on the packet and they give the 10 and yeah. repeat note. And it's something so simple, but that is how they learn to manage money as well yeah no very 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 important um and so one of the questions that just came up uh, so i'm i'm going to read out the question so that we don't miss out anything is yeah. how many sessions do you require for your for you to design the iep for the child given that the child is visiting you Bahirse? so it all depends on at what level the child is at so um I would say for early learners, they say for ABA to be effective, and this is scientifically proven, you need to do a minimum of 20 hours a week. Mm -hmm. So essentially, that would be two, day, two hours a day for five days. But given there may be particular constraints, um, I would say maybe they can come in thrice a week. 
um, but generally we do one hour sessions. We do have some two hour sessions, but for someone who's maybe given the question you asked me for someone who's visiting from abroad, um, I would generally say that the more frequently they can come, if they can come five days a week, better, because that way we can closely monitor them and every day we can watch their progression. And there's a big difference between the kids who come five days a week versus the kids who come twice or thrice a week. Okay. So, um, and that gives us a, a good timeline of schedules. Right, right. And so important schedules are and routines are for children. And the, the one of the other questions is um, that you know the age. What particular ages are you working on? Are you also working on teenagers? So, uh, so I particularly because I focus on early intervention. I work with children between two and seven. That is generally the age group I work with. Um, I would like to work with teenagers, and I hopefully will get there at some point. But the, the reason we work on early intervention is if we nip it in the bud, then, you know, it's something so interesting. The kids who come to me, many of them, when they started, could not speak. We do sign language. And I'd yeah. say, mashallah, may, all of my clients, barring one or two, are now speaking in about two months. So mm -hmm. that is the effect of early intervention. So I work with the little ones as of now. Now, uh, for uh, there are a lot of children, um, my own especially, uh, who have, uh, uh, you know, sidelined um, uh, physical uh, differences whereby signing is not on the cards for us, right? So when we are talking about, and, and we can show them, we can show them by visual, visually placing cards. Like, I mean, I've had the help card for her as long as I can remember, right? How would you encourage signing in children who cannot sign physically? Very good question. So basically, there are three forms of communication. There is vocal, which is um, speaking. There is um, sign. And there is PECS, which is Picture Exchange Communication System. Now, um, what I've noticed is in, in Pakistan, at least, they focus a lot on pecs. And the belief is that if you do sign language, and I see this all the time, if you do sign language with your child, they're not going to speak. But it's so interesting because actually sign language encourages speech. But let's take a child who cannot sign because they've got weak fine motor skills. Oh. So what we would essentially do is we, and it, but then if they can't sign because of weak motor skills, we'll see, do they have the ability to make sounds? Mm -hmm. Because using pictures is our last resort and we use that for children who are a little bit more physically challenged or um, have as i said weak fine motor skills then we'd work on pecs there is also um, a program called proloquo it's an app um, which you can get on, on the ipad and that is very popular when i was being trained in london and, and dubai uh, whereby children um, select what they want by picture and they can string sentences together and uh, and accordingly ask for what they want. So I would say for a child like that, I would generally recommend using that app or using pictures whereby they'd give you the picture and they'd get what they want. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so somebody just uh, somebody just asked uh, that uh, the the question in in terms of IEP, they're asking how many sessions are required to build an IEP. I, I got it. Sorry, I sorry, I, I didn't answer your question properly. Uh, to, to build an IP, usually uh, d depends on how long the assessment takes. So if your child is very, 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 very low skills hai and they're early learners, yeah. assessment can take three days and then three days later, the IP can create. And after three sessions, sometimes it can take a week. If your child is more advanced, it means that you need to assess more. And when we finish the assessment, khatam karte hai, then it can even take a week. But generally, I would say a week. Uh, to create an IP, so five sessions. Thank you. Um, which brings me to one of our next questions, uh, relating it to what we were talking about earlier. Ke bahut saare parents jo aate hain, unke mind mein ek hi cheez hoti hai ke bhai isko bolna sikha de, isko padhna likha, padhna sikha de, isko sitting tolerance sikha de, taaki ye school mein zada better perform kar sake. How, and, and we did talk about the fact that being functionally independent is the and prime thing, and then taking on the school curriculum. Now, if mm -hmm. parents come and they say, so we have to follow 
it, this is what we are binding. We have to follow the school, school curriculum. How do you integrate, or if you do at all, integrate your uh, therapy session with the school curriculum? Okay, so um, I, I have a couple of clients who school jati hai or saath saath mere paas aati hai. So what I do is I ask the parents ki kaun se skills uh, pe school kaam kar rahi hai or kaun se hai jo bachche ke liye mushkil hai. And then we take those and we work on those. So for example, writing, uh, making lines. Now a child is uh, meant to write their name theek hai, as a school requirement. Lekin wo bachcha so we would then start working on the pre-skills letters form to pele horizontal line, vertical line, L shape line, square line, squiggly line. In pe pele kaam karte and aista aista se pe hum letters pe pahunchte hain. Another one is let's say the child needs to know how to do patterns. So red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. Pher hum us pe kaam karte hain session mein. So we do integrate certain skills from school. Um, at right. home, uh, in the center to work on those. Another thing is, let's say the child doesn't socialize at school. That's another one. So we also work on socialization. We have sessions whereby we have two kids at a time and we teach them how to trade and have turns, etc. Okay. Um, one of the questions just that came in is, please discuss some strategies about managing child's behavior that is not because of attention or escape, but reason child can't express her feelings appropriately. Like if they got hurt, or rather than saying, oh, I hurt, she starts saying the name of the people she doesn't like. Um, I guess what, what uh, the person is asking really is that how can we differentiate a child's behavior from their feelings? I, I mean, yes. that's what I'm understanding from appropriation. Yeah, so f essentially from this question, what they're essentially asking is, what's happening here is the child's communication is a barrier um so they're not trying to get attention they're not trying to escape but in fact they're trying to ask for something or tell you something and they don't know how to so instead of right. telling you that i'm hurt they're saying the person they don't like so what you want to do in a situation like that in in, in aba we call this um we call this for sort of behavior um, that the motivation is strong but they don't know how to man which is request so what you do is if you know that your child um, is hurt, you need to prompt them to say, I'm hurt. So the moment, what you do is you need to capture the moments when you know that they feel hurt and you prompt them to say, I'm hurt. And when they say, I'm hurt, then you go and you help them out. When they say these other people's names that they don't like and you say, oh, are you hurt? You're basically teaching the child that by saying random names, I understand you're trying to say I'm hurt. So you want to change that behavior by not reinforcing them when they say these random names. And instead, you teach them how to functionally communicate by using the moments they hurt to say I'm hurt. And then they learn that, oh, when I say I'm hurt, mama comes to me. But when I say random people's names that I don't like, mama doesn't come to me. So that means I need to say I'm hurt when I'm hurt. Okay. Because in this in this particular case, the child is verbal. Now, yeah. for example, if we flip the side and we come to a non-verbal child. Yeah, yeah. What, what would our protocol be then? Okay, so uh, generally what we do is, so if the child is not verbal we, and we're not work, working on vocalizations, then let's say we're working on sign language because we predominantly do sign and vocal. We don't do text at all as of now. Um, so what we would essentially do is if we're trying to teach the child the concept of hurt, um, then we would introduce a sign. So we know, let's say a child has just banged their leg, then they need to come to us and maybe sign, uh, do a sign like this. And we're like, and then every time they hurt, they have to sign. So they learn that when they hurt, they come to me and they do this. And I'm like, oh, they hurt. And we say hurt, hurt, hurt. And then we touch that part that they hurt. So we would do introduce the sign instead of the word hurt. Every now, time. Before, hurt. before I come to my next question, exactly what you just said, uh, reiterating. So the prompter is reiterating. Not necessarily the child is saying hurt. But if yeah. that indication is good enough and the prompter name hurt 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 and it's been verified by the child that is good enough without right. the child saying it right. yeah absolutely agar bachcha bol nahi sakta aur wo nahi keh sakte to aap bol dein because kya hota hai bachchon ke sath ki agar wo bol nahi sakte wo associations banate hai to wo awaaz jo hurt hai jo loves hurt hai they will associate hurt ka matlab hurt hota hai. For example, if I'm teaching a child water, har dafa mein unko ek ghoon deti hu, wo water nahi bol rahe, wo sign water kar rahe. Lekin wo seek jati hai ki 
वाटर का जो लफ्ज है उसका मतलब ये है और उसका मतलब पानी मिलेगा तो दे मेक एसोसिएशन विद द वर्ड हर्ट सो पेरेंट्स ऑलवेज हैव टू टॉक टू द चाइल्ड वट एवर दे साइनिंग वो ही लफ्ज पेरेंट्स को बोलना चाहिए तो उनको उनके दिमाग में एसोसिएशन बैठ जाएगा capacity. very good question and in fact i'm trying to think so i've had one client who was global developmentally delayed mm-hmm. and uh, so he had the cochlear implant and um what happened is that we were working on trying to get sounds and what he would do is if i said oo he can't hear the oo sound but he would copy the mouth movement of oo but really with a child who could not hear me it was hard for him to copy the sound so we focus a lot on visual things so let's say i'm teaching a child to match and i'm saying match they can't hear me so what i would do is i would hold out a card that might be a symbol of matching and i'd show out that symbol and then i'd give them the item and they'd have to put same same together so they'd look at the symbol which is the q and then they'd have to learn that they need to copy that by matching so uh, with a child who struggles to hear we would work a lot more on using visual cues and visual prompts okay um again this uh, please suggest some free online courses for managing child's behavior i guess at this point in time when we are under lockdown bahut sare log up are giving uh, online sessions um teletherapy is on are you conducting any kind of um online so i am uh, on my page i have started i do uh, i do basically live sessions so like this um and i get a bunch of questions and i go through all of them so i'm doing live videos on my page and i'm going to try and be more regular at that uske ilawa i have had a couple of sessions with some clients who come to me for therapy and um, i'm kind of trying to train the parents to implement certain strategies to wo bhi ho raha hai and i am doing online consultations as well so yes i'm very much um, um doing remote work and with regards to courses there are many out there um i would need to answer this question maybe separately so if you can inbox i have a facebook page isma khan dash bcba aap mujhe wahan message kar le with us sorry isma uh, after after the post goes up if you can kindly share um your page uh, i your uh, clinic uh, all those details that would be really really great great i'll do and that and then i'll tell you the courses that you can do so we can work on that yeah yeah because i guess uh, is waqt log ekdam se wo type nahi kar payenge so if you could share them with us under this post that would be great bilkul bilkul um now we were talking about reinforcement this month mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what are the best methods that parents can take home from you what they've learned and what are the best modes of reinforcement okay so reinforcement is a very interesting concept and reinforcement is the foundation of aba therapy we do not work on punishment we do not use punishment we work on reinforcement because we try and strengthen the behaviors that we think are appropriate now one message i want to give out there is Okay let's say a child is working on something let's say we're working on teaching a child how to imitate by doing this or do this or do this right or do this what i would do is in that moment i would maybe cuz the child loves chips or juice i would give them a piece of a chip or a sip of juice when they do it correctly but what you want to be mindful of is reinforcers change all the time so let's say aapka bachcha ne abhi nashta khaya hai aur mere sath baith ke kaam kar rahe hain उनको चिप्स और जूस प्रोबेबली नहीं चाहिए होगा अच्छा कोई बच्चे हैं जिनको जंक बहुत पसंद है हर वक्त चाहिए होता है बट समटाइम्स अगर उनका पेट भरा होगा उनको उस वक्त नहीं चाहिए होगा वो री तो फिर आपने सोचना है कुछ और क्या हम और क्या दे सकते हैं बबल्स दे सकते हैं म्यूजिक दे सकते हैं सो वॉट यू वॉन्ट कीप इन माइंड इज दैट इफ अ री इज़ नॉट वर्किंग change it because throughout the day reinforcers keep changing if your child has just come from swimming or pani mein the 
और फिर आप एंड देन यूर यूजिंग वाटर प्ले एज अ रीनफोर्सर वो अभी पानी में थे तो अभी उस वक्त शायद पानी से इतना मोटिवेटेड नहीं होंगे तो शायद आप कुछ और इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं सो विथ री एनफोर्सर्स यू वॉन्ट टू मेक श्योर दैट दे ऑलवेज चेंज एंड यू वॉन्ट टू बट इफ देर इफेक्टिव डोंट गिव द री एनफोर्सर ऑल इन वन गो स्पेस इट आउट पूरा पैकेट चिप्स का ना दे जब वो एक सही चीज़ करते हैं एक चिप को टुकड़ों में करके एक टुकड़ा दें ताकि फिर एक पैकेट ऑफ चिप्स में आप कितनी दफ़ा सिखा सकते हैं अगर हर हर टुकड़ा पे बच्चा काम करता है सो दैट्स एन अदर थिंग Okay, we have uh, somebody who joined in and said that my son is non-verbal and hyperactive. He is so bored. He eats all day. I guess we are talking about being in lockdown. So um, eats all day. We fail to engage him in activities for long as he doesn't pay attention and runs away. Starts eating again. Not only food but uncooked lentils, rice flour, and he also chews on hairs and threads. Okay, so um, with this question, so first of all, I want to say is, um, I'm not sure that if your child has any diagnosis or any delay, but what I do want to say on the side is that many children with autism also have ADHD. but not all children with adhd have autism um so but i don't know in this case what the situation is but i would say ki aapke bacche ki definitely sensory issues hain uh, mouthing ka uh, jiska matlab hai ki unko samajh nahi aa raha ki kaun si cheeze wo kha sakte hain aur kaun si cheeze nahi kha sakte aur wo baar baar cheeze muh mein dal rahe hain aap keh rahe hain dal jo pakki hui nahi hai ya baal ya threads kyunki jab wo muh mein dalte hain unko ek stimulation milta hai उस चीज से एंड आई वुड से फॉर समथिंग लाइक दैट यू वॉन्ट टू डेफिनेटली इनरोल दम इन ऑक्यूपेशनल थेरेपी जिसमें या स्पीच थेरेपी जिसमें वो माउथ मसल्स को एक्सरसाइज करते हैं ताकि अप्रोप्रिएटली और अप्रोप्रिएट चीज़ें इस्तेमाल करते हैं जैसे चूई ट्यूब्स या कोई और चीज़ें जो अप्रोप्रिएट है उन माउथ मसल्स को स्टिमुलेट करने के लिए और क्या होता है कभी कभार कि हमारे मुँह में या हमारे जो में एक लॉक हो जाता है और इस वजह से बच्चे बार बार स्टिम्यूलेट स्टिमुलेशन ढूंढ रहे हैं तो आपने एक और स्टिमुलेशन ढूंढना है जो अप्रोप्रिएट है um, और विथ रिगार्ड टू ईटिंग ऑल डे देखें जब बच्चा बार बार खा रहा है उसका मतलब है कि उसको एक्सेस मिल रहा है आपने चीज़ें को ऊपर कबर्ड्स में रखना है या छुपाना है ताकि वो बार बार खा नहीं खाएँ और आपने ये भी देखना है कि आपका बच्चा पूरे मील्स खाता है या नहीं खाता बिकॉज शायद वो पूरे मील्स नहीं खा रहे और इसलिए बार बार स्नैकिंग कर रहा है so you want to monitor it but again when i leave my facebook page details uh, after this call feel free to contact me we'll speak about it in more detail because it's very child specific yes so uh, zofisha aapne uh, sawal puche hain and uh, i think um norin ne bhi puche hain so i think this is very very specific to your children uh, because uh, it is it is वॉशरूम and usually ask the same question again and again i got it yeah i got it so essentially um what she's talking about is the child has a uh, sensory behavior again of talking repeating yeah. now again i don't know is your child adh sorry autistic to their echolalia echolalia is a, a condition which is often children with autism also have whereby they repeat the last thing they've heard again and again और डिलेड एक्लेलिया कि अभी उन्होंने कुछ सुना है और दो घंटे बाद वो वही चीज़ बार बार रिपीट कर रहे हैं तो इट कुड बी दैट इज वेल बट फॉर सेल्फ टॉकिंग वन थिंग इज गुड इफ शीज अगर ये आपकी बेटी प्रटेंट प्ले में अपने बाप से बात करिए दैट्स गुड दैट्स गुड सेल्फ टॉकिंग बिकॉज शी इज टॉकिंग टू अर सेल्फ और शी इज प्लेइंग एंड दैट्स वेरी फंक्शनल बट अगर आप कह रही हैं कि शी इज टॉकिंग एनी वेयर एंड शी इज रिपीटिंग रैंडम वर्ड्स सी दैट इज सेंसरी when she does it she gets this internal stimulation and i get this question a lot ke agar bachcha bar bar randomly kuch bolta rehta hai um jahan bhi jate hain apne aap apne aap ke sath baat karte hain ye ek cheez hai jo aap rok nahi sakte aap stop nahi kar sakte because jo unke muh se nikal aata hai aap unke muh ko block to nahi kar sakte but what you can do is you can find ways to distract them 
اور سنگ اے سانگ ود دیم اور ڈو سم تھنگ ود دیم انگیج ود دیم تاکہ وہ اپنے آپ سے بات نہ کریں اور آپ کے ساتھ کچھ گائیں یا انٹریکٹ کریں سو دیٹ از جسٹ ون آف دا ویز ٹو ٹیکل سیلف ٹاکنگ اینڈ آپ کہہ رہی ہیں کہ یوزلی ایف شی آس دا سیم کوشچن آئی آسک ہر ٹو ٹیل می دی آنسر سو شی رپلائز بٹ دین شی لوز ٹو آسک سو دیٹ مینس وہ بار بار آپ سے وہ سوال پوچھ رہی ہیں ایون تو آپ نے جواب دے دیا ہے تو آپ نے کیا کرنا ہے کہ آپ نے ایک دفعہ جواب دینا ہے اور پھر سے پوچھیے آپ نے بولنا ہے کہ میں نے آپ کو آلریڈی ایک دفعہ بتا دیا میں پھر سے نہیں بتاؤں گی اور وہ بار بار اس وجہ سے پوچھ رہی ہے کیونکہ وہ آپ کا ٹینشن چاہ رہی ہے اور آپ کا ریسپانس بار بار چاہ رہی ہے جو آپ نے ری انفورس اتنا نہیں کرنا اینڈ دس کوڈ آلسو الور آف ٹائمس ری کنفرمیشن یا ری افرمیشن از سوڈنگ فار اے چائلڈ لیکن بہت دفعہ ایسا بھی ہو سکتا ہے اسما کہ چائلڈ از اسٹافڈ فار اٹینشن اینڈ ہینس they are wanting it more than the desired number of times sorry i missed that a child is and then i lost the word so, uh, so a lot of times a lot of times uh during having watched years of therapy i uh, i've also noticed that sometimes children are starved for attention yes they unko utni attention nahi mil rahi hoti isliye wo bar bar aur bhi zyada deliberately wo sawal kar rahe hote hain bilkul so can you say that a, a parent can say ke میں نے آپ کو ایک دفعہ سمجھایا ہے اگر آپ کو نہیں سمجھ میں آئی ہے تو آپ دوبارہ پوچھیے لیکن بار بار مت پوچھیے ہاؤ ڈو یو تھنک دیٹ سیٹلز ویل ود دا چائلڈ کین دیٹ ٹریگر کین دیٹ ٹریگر اٹینٹرم اور اوکے سو ان ایٹ اسینچلی دیٹ مینس از لیٹس پور ان اے بی اے ٹرمس لیٹس سی از اف اے چائلڈ آس فار اٹینشن یو گیو اٹ ونس ایک دفعہ آپ نے بول دیا آپ نے جواب دے دیا پھر وہ پھر سے بولتے پھر آپ بولتے میں نے آپ کو بھی بتایا تھا میں پھر سے نہیں بولوں گی دین دی لاسٹ دی لاسٹ دی لاسٹ یو لیک نو وی کال دیٹ ایکسٹنکشن that you completely do not reinforce the response essentially. So what some children try to do is they'll ask you another question. They'll ask that again. They'd find different ways of getting your attention. They might throw a tantrum, they, they will, but they, will, they might throw something, then they look for your reaction. So children might resort to doing other things to get your attention. But what you need to ensure in a moment like that is you do not give the attention. Because even giving negative attention is attention, which is, reinforcing for them so even though you're saying don't do that and to you it's negative to them they like it because you still looked at them yeah so you want to be mindful so uh uh i guess hum log is waqt baat kar rahe hain because they, we are under lockdown hum apne gharon mein hain so one of the one of the questions is that can we carry out aba interventions online as in can uh can a can a therapist help carry out an aba session online Absolutely. You can carry out ABA sessions online. Um, it all depends on if you have goals, if you have IP, if you have an assessment or not. But you can do it completely ABA online. I can do it completely. And there are other therapists who are taking online sessions. But for ABA specifically, I work on that. So you can carry out sessions and I would probably have to train the parents. Or, um to to work on it or i mean if the therapist is doing it then yes you can um now i know we touched upon this uh pehle bhi ke uh, you do want parents to be reinforcers at home so reiterate therapy reiterate it like a normal schedule um when aage se jab parents jo hote hain wo resistant hote hain to the treatment programs how do you deal with that situation okay so what i do in a situation like that is i explain to the parents why i'm doing what i'm doing so again parents are resistant for a reason okay so i then try and understand why are they resistant for example i just i i told a parent that i'm going to be working on sign language and they were resistant they said i don't like it when my hand my child flicks their hand for water and now they're flicking their hand for everything they want because they're over generalizing the sign and I and I what I did was I actually provided evidence I provided them with the article I said read this it'll make sense to you and I will explain to the parents in the in a context that they will understand still resistance can come but mm-hmm. often I say that this is the way we practice and we use evidence based methods which have been proven if they really disagree um, and if they really don't want me to do it I will try and find a middle ground or agar wo bhi nahi kaam kar raha then I'll then I may just say that I 
it'll be difficult for me to work with the child. Uh, but having said that, I try to take on parents' suggestions on board as much as I can because we want to work as a team. We don't want to be working against each other. So I try and make sure to be working together in touch with that has always been the case. But sometimes if there's resistance, I reason, I explain, I understand their perspective, and then we find a middle ground. Now we have uh, Fodier who is absolutely an amazing, amazing mother. And one of her questions is that many adult ASDs com comment that verbal stimming is a part of their self-regulation. Mm -hmm. So it seems that curtailing it is not desirable, but instead to help our adolescents hear, um, help our adolescents schedule their verbal stimming during me times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for you to comment on this right so uh kare thi ki aap, uh, i had we had another question as well whereby the child would keep uh, repeating the same thing or talking to themselves that is also called verbal stimming um so with adults because uh, as they get older they you can go and teach them more complicated um strategies so yes, yes what you can do is you can basically explain to the child showing a picture or following techniques to show them that when you're in your room and it's your own time you can verbally stim and when you come out of that door you can't by the way the same rule applies for adults since we're on the topic let's say for boys who are looking for stimulation um, even some girls and i actually saw a client like this when i was in london whereby he would just pull down his pants and look for stimulation in his um, in his body parts and in his, exactly and obviously he can't just pull down his pants anywhere so the mom was concerned that so then they taught him that when you are in your room on your bathroom then you can do it and that's you time and when you come out you cannot so you can use that principle for teaching many sorts of behaviors so they learn what's appropriate in one setting and what's not appropriate in another and, and with this kind of appropriation, it brings me uh, to talk to you about um, uh, touch, self-touch, and our genitalia. These are ye, just a second. Abhi keh diya, bhat hai logo ne apne kano pe hai. But, you know, it is um, teaching children about puberty. Uh, uh, I mean, teaching non-verbal children about puberty, teaching children about their sexual organs, their sexual orientation. Their, it, it is anyways, uh, as a general rule, our community, our country, it is looked down upon as a stigma and taboo. Welcome. I can I can understand जब किसी जब कोई बच्चा आता है who could be as young as five or six and they are stimulating themselves right or touching yep. themselves. Yeah. How difficult is it to be on one page with the parent and explain to them this is okay and we can take care of it through steps. Yeah. So um it, so initially I think parents are a bit uncomfortable so mm -hmm. I had a child who would go and he was four years old and he would go to the mother's leg mm -hmm. and try and rub himself on her leg and mm -hmm. she would then stop him um, but what you would do is that you would find replacement behaviors so either you'd block them let's say if they're really small and you don't want them to do it you'd block them um, or you would follow steps so you would the moment you find them doing it to you at that moment, you take them to the room and um, you basically, depending on, so I've noticed a lot of people, and I'm actually going to say this from experience, the reason I'm in this field is because um, I have a, um, my uncle's son in my family is severely autistic and he's about 21. And when he was four, he would take out the pillow and he'd pull off his shorts and he'd rock on it. Mm -hmm. And then we'd go in and we'd, the moment he'd open, the, he'd hear the doors open, he'd quickly pull up his pants and put the pillow back because he knew he was doing something wrong. And I guess when his child is so small, we don't encourage it as much. But as they get older, what happens is that the parents need to actually teach the child generally boys more than girls required sooner how to, what to do and actually it's important for them to release anything because otherwise and I've seen this with another client his hormone the child's hormones were so all over the place that he had such severe behaviors he'd bite he'd scratch because he didn't know how to release it yeah. so I would say in a situation like this is that if you want to 
if the child is very small and you don't want to encourage it, you can kind of block it because I think sometimes that's okay. But if the child is older and you then you have to teach them in a particular setting. Right. That's the role and, of the parents. And, and, and in general with boys, like you said, it can come as early as four or uh, appropriation can set in as, um, uh, as quickly as nine or ten. And this could be for all boys uh, uh, across the uh, across the globe i mean we're not just talking about differently abled or uh, special needs children um so th this is a really really important uh, question uh, that thank you for discussing because a lot of times i have faced therapists who have found who who've actually given me a dumbstruck look when i've asked them questions in relation to genitalia and 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 so thank you so much for understanding and answering that um one of one of the last few questions i have for you isma is that a lot of times um the first moment jab parent andar aata hai daakhil hota hai aapke room mein aapke clinic mein um obviously when you're meeting the parent for the first time there's a lot of trust issues mm -hmm. which, is, which is normal more than the parent i'm interested to know how do you deal with the child's trust issues because children as little as 18 months Absolutely. Have, know how of okay can i trust this person or not so yeah so um this is something very important and a lot of people miss this so i have people who come to me and they say we went to xyz therapy and but the child didn't want to go in they didn't want to go to the therapist so there is a reason for that basically to build on trust what you do is let's say a child comes एंड वो बच्चा मुझे जानता नहीं है ठीक है अगर वो मुझे बच्चा जानता नहीं है तो मुझे ट्रस्ट कैसे करेगा तो वट आई वुड डू इज मैं पेरेंट्स से पूछूंगी कि आपके बच्चे को क्या क्या पसंद है एंड जब वो मैं उस बच्चे से मिलती हूँ मैं वो चीजें पीछे से निकाल के Ever, we're just done. We're just done. Almost. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Uh, continue. So yeah. So basically, what I would say is, um, in order for that child, for the child to build trust in you, you need to do things with that child that they will enjoy, and don't force them. Don't pull them in and make hold them and make them play with toys. See what the child is doing and follow the child's lead. That is the most important thing. अगर बच्चे ने किसी टॉय को हाथ लगाया है आप वो टॉय और टॉय उनके साथ खेलेंगे अगर बच्चा पीछे हो रहा है यू विल स्लोली गो फॉरवर्ड एंड टिकल देम देन पीछे जाएंगे फिर थोड़ा आगे जाएंगे फिर और टिकल करेंगे और आहिस्ता आहिस्ता से वो बच्चे का ट्रस्ट और आ जाएगा हाय से हाय नो नो ओके आई थिंक वी फेल इन अ पडल आउटसाइड ओप्सी सो वी आर वेयर टू बी सी वेट अम अ Thank you for joining us, Elena. <laughs> um, so I, I guess, I guess, uh, you know, puberty is such an important uh, subject. Uh, Somia just uh, also is thanking you for touching on that subject because it is, it is a uh, a topic that is generally not talked about. And so maybe, maybe we can have another session soon. Hopefully, sure. we'll be talking about puberty, challenges of puberty, sex. Sexual orientation. Some some uh, uh, differently able children starts develop start developing female uh, feelings for not the same um, uh, not the opposite gender but the same sex, and it is so difficult for teenagers to sort of you know channelize like you said they need to let it out so that their behavior can be channeled, um, and and it is it is quite, quite an important thing. Um, before we before we uh, end our uh, session isma what are the two things that you would like to inform the parents in terms of early intervention because i know we touched upon it and we spoke about it and bahut sare aise parents hote hain jo kehte hain ki bhai hum apne bacche ke sath speech bhi kar rahe hain hum apne bacche ke sath occupational bhi kar rahe hain physio bhi kar rahe hain hum nahi provide kar pa rahe आप हमें बताएं कि सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट चीज क्या है तो ओके सो 
एक चीज है कि यहाँ क्या होता है और असल में मैंने एक शो किया था होस्ट किया था टीवी पे चाय टोस्ट और होस्ट पे अगर अगेन मैं उसकी भी डिटेल्स डाल सकती हूँ वो भी बहुत इंफॉर्मेटिव सेशंस है लेकिन और डिफरेंट टॉपिक्स पे और मैंने इस पर बात किया था मैंने बोला था कि बहुत यहाँ पाकिस्तान में क्या होता है कि बच्चा का डायग्नोसिस होता है और वो फिर वो जो डायग्नोसिस करते हैं वो कहते हैं और मैं सारे डिफरेंट डिफरेंट इंस्टीट्यूशंस में और वो कहते हैं बच्चा को ओटी स्पीच बिहेवियर थेरेपी सारी चीज़ में डाल दो एंड इट्स नॉट नेसेसरी समटाइम्स योर चाइल्ड जस्ट नीड्स ए बी समटाइम्स दे नीड ए बी एंड स्पीच इफ योर चाइल्ड इज रियली हैविंग वीक फाइन मोटर एंड फिजिकल इशूज एन श्योर मे बी ओ टी but aba is a swarm therapy that covers hand washing tooth brushing we work on fine motor skills a bit yes ot and speech work on other things but we work on a lot of things and when a parent says that i often say ki aapke bacche kyun ot ja rahe hain kyun speech ja rahe hain agar bol sakte hain speech kyun ja rahe hain so i try and understand wo kaun si sessions mein kyun ja rahe hain and accordingly in fact this has happened ki they've come to me having gone to so many sessions and they can't come to aba and then i've tried to understand the reason they do these sessions काम किए हैं और ए बी ए को ज्यादा किया है सो दैट इज वन थिंग आई ट्राई एंड अंडरस्टैंड कि अगर आपके बच्चे को असल में नीड नहीं है ओटी के लिए तो भेज रहे क्यों है एंड ऑफन that is the case they don't need ot but they go for ot and that is what a lot of, a lot of parents do complain ke ye therapist ko hame batana chahiye ke hamare bacche ko session ki zarurat nahi hai because uh, their fine motor skills are functioning perfectly their gross motor skills are uh, functioning perfectly but aisa aisa to hota hai ke bahut sare aise therapists hain jo continued therapy rakhte hain um are you one of those therapists is ma who work on a schedule and routine and say ke itne sessions required hai iske baad aap ye ghar pe kar sakte ho um i'm not so strict on that i think the more intervention and the more but not different types wow nice <laughs> is that a house it's my birthday party happening in the house I love it. Okay, <laughs> so um, what I would say is, I'm not someone who says, "Bas itni hone chahiye," or and that's it. I say, do fewer sessions, but do sessions that the child needs. There is no point doing four therapy, four OT sessions a day when your child only needs it maybe once a week. So I'm all about because even parents' ke liye idhar udhar waha bhagna is therapy pe jana unke liye bhi stressful ho jata hai. So it's very important to. find out what your child needs and then i narrow it down accordingly happy yeah in in terms of the focus happy birthday <laughs> yeah um, so that is what i would say regarding uh, limiting and try to ensure that the child goes for the most necessary therapy right. Yeah. Um thank you so much Isma I think we will have to bring you in for another session because our time is running near and the kids are becoming very um <laughs> So, so, uh, what uh, what would you like to end the session with? Uh, a message to the parents, a message to your fraternity. Under the cases that we are living right now in lockdown, uh, a lot of parents are waiting to see you. A lot of children are waiting to see you. Um, what words of encouragement would you like to? <laughs> so, firstly, I would say is um, that. I know during the lockdown a lot of parents are asking ki hum apne bachche ko busy kaise rakh sakte hain kya kar sakte hain so i've been telling a lot of parents and even during my sessions ki aap apne bachche ko apne saath jo bhi aap kar rahe hain include kare agar aap kitchen mein kuch kara rahe hain unko baking karaye mixing karaye agar aapka bachcha 3 saal ka hai you can also work on mixing with them so include your child in whatever activities the parents are doing if if you're laying the table get them to match plate with plate spoon with fork and put laying a table so teach them a lot of functional skills during this time and i also so want you to know that the interview also saath mein what's yeah. that if you are online interviewing or working yeah. let them also be a part of your work too yeah. <laughs> yeah and i would also say that for parents who are struggling during this time and are frustrated i would say that I know ये बच्चे आपको शायद अभी फिलहाल आप इनके साथ इतना टाइम गुजार रहे हैं कि इट कैन मेक यू लो कि आपके बच्चे ऐसे क्यों हैं बट आई वॉन्ट यू टू नो दैट दीज चिल्ड्रेन दैट यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट आर अमेजिंग एंड वेरी इंटेलिजेंट दे अंडरस्टैंड एवरी थिंग डू नॉट अंडर एस्टिमेट अगर वो बात नहीं कर सकते उसका मतलब नहीं है कि वो समझ नहीं सकते सो वर्क टॉक टू दैम 
work with them, play with them, have fun with them. And the more you do that, the more your child will respond to you. And the more you take your child with you in this world and in your work every day, very nice. So, the more you can grow up with your child. Thank you so much, Isma. Uh, and I have zoned out as a last one minute. Thank you so much. again uh on, and, and this time around we'll have more questions structured around um a lot of other things happy birthday. Well, happy birthday to you once again as well thank you <laughs> happy birthday to you so thank you no we're not oh, well. right that way thank you so much Isma. i hope you are safe and you are um a lot of people reach out to you soon inshallah thank, thank you so thank you for your time that was Isma. Uh, I am so, so grateful to all the therapists who are uh, time to How are they going to listen to me? Are you you want to sing a song for everybody? So uh, the kids are getting unsettled, so I have to go. Um, but before I tune out, um, and uh, and feed the, the high that they're on. Seven o'clock today will be joining us Homera Surya. Homera Surya, all the way from Houston live. Uh, she has taken our time. Uh, so before the, the kava bites me, I'm going to say khuda face, take care of yourself and I will see you at seven o'clock. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs> We're going. <laughs>